Ever since May, I haven't been able to consume meat and carbs and dairy the same. I became largely a vegetarian. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> this is my homeware. But let me make you guys laugh. This, it's actually a onesie. I was going to call it a jumpsuit, which is so hilarious because I know it looks kind of snug and good, even makes my booty look good. But guys, look what happens here. And you know why? It's for a 14 year old. Yeah, I had to get one for Huru and Mali. I to get them onesies because it's been so cold. And I was freezing, so I said, wait, this one I need to grab one. They were like, ma'am, it's for a 14 year old. I said, it's fine, I'll make a plan. So, no judgment. I still look a bit dolled up because this is the same day that I've had a webinar. And I thought it would be a really cool day to also do this unboxing courtesy of YouTube. So I got this package, paneer biryani with Chef Ali Mandri. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Chef Ali Mandri. I think a lot of you are. He's an insanely talented chef. and from the coast, which is like my favorite place in the world. And his dishes, even just by looking at them on social media, make you wanna cry. I'm like, how does somebody cook so well? So let's take a look at what's in here. Ooh, oh, this is nice. So this is, this says cook with me. Here it shows a list of how to prep the cooking and it serves four people and some instructions there. So there we go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh wow, look at that. This is so cool. Very cool. Can I open it up and see what's inside? <gasps> Yay, an apron! Oh no, this is dope, guys. Yay. So maybe this will motivate me then. Maybe. I am going to have to get to it. I think I'm going to prepare this this weekend. Yeah. So this is a couple of days later. You can see the hair came out, um, but I'm pretty much wearing the same jumpsuit, the same onesie, because today is so cold. It is freezing. I'm a little bit sleepy and groggy, so just bear with me. Um, Mali's actually taking a nap, literally just next to me on the couch, so I can see, and Huru is playing outside. So this is the perfect time to make this dish which is paneer biryani with chef Ali Mandri, part of the cook with me uh i guess i would say challenge with youtube i haven't cooked as much in a long time and i know there's been quarantine and everything going on but what i do is very basic i love flavor by the way but i'm not gonna lie i haven't been as motivated to enjoy a cooking experience um so i'm hoping this will inspire me Oh, so I did prep, okay? I diced everything pretty much, that it's just to put everything in there and cook it up. As I'm cooking, as I'm trying to attempt to cook from a chef who cooks ridiculously well, I'm gonna try and walk you through my own journey with food right now, to where I am now, and the transitions I've had, maybe becoming a mom or working a lot and just everything has, my diet is so central to my life and I know that sounds obvious because it's central to everyone's life but I feel like I've transitioned in a very interesting way so I can explain that as we go along in the meantime let's get this cooking going I hope you guys like my cooking outfit I think it's pretty dope for home you know the onesie action there by the way it's late afternoon so I'm actually making dinner now I just thought now is the best time so as that gets heat and I get ready to put the onions in. I grew up in the coast. I've grown up around a lot of fruits, a lot of, you know, fluids are very much a part and parcel of something that's important to me. Lots of water, lots of freshly squeezed juice, but lots of flavor. <gasps> my favorite food, my favorite dish is pilau. I love ugali and sukumawiki. And then I love flavored stews, you know, things like curries and biryanis and oh, I love flavor. I love, love, love flavor. So, you know, that's kind of something that I've done for a while. Just put a little bit of oil. I already used the small bottle <laughs> that I unboxed with. So 
we're on to this one. Although I usually use, if I'm not using this, I use olive oil. I mostly use olive oil for cooking, especially for the boys. I cook their food with olive oil. So right now I'm going to put the onions in on my tray. <laughs> I love how I am makeshifting this life. Guys, I have never, ever, ever, ever done a cook with me video. And then I'm gonna try and read the instructions as we go along. Um, so I'll put this tray back and it says here, fry the onions until they're golden brown. A natural thing to do, obviously. Using the same oil, fry the potatoes to get a good crust. So then I'm gonna put the potatoes in there. So yeah, I've grown up with a lot of flavor and, you know, choice, seafood. And so I think my palate has been exposed from a very early age because you can imagine things like mbaazi, mahamri, kaimati, you know, um, biryani, chapati, masala, cardamoms. Hello. Look who's making a cameo. <laughs> You're supposed to be helping me cook. So who has clearly decided, no, but you haven't washed your hands, my love. You have to go wash your hands before you touch things. You have to go wash your hands. You have to go wash your hands first. Roll up your sleeves and wash your hands. I, I highly doubt he's gonna stick with me for a, for a long time. Um, so I think I was saying my palate has been exposed to flavor for such a long time. And so it's hard for me not to have food that doesn't have flavor. It's really hard. Even though I went through a bland food phase, which I'll explain in a bit. Um, <laughs> yes, this start them young. Start them young. You're going to do either Chopped or Masterchef, right? Hi. Kunkuru has a knack for wanting to do something in cooking and I need to explore it. Let's put the potatoes. And it says here, I hope it doesn't jump into your eyes. It says here, um, until they get a good crust and then cut the, cut the paneer in cubes and set aside. And then I think we're going to need a separate pan. Okay. You want to cook for me? Go ahead. Start young. That's how you do it. That is so not a muiko, but you know what? It's okay. There you go. Well in. Thumbs up. Okay. Oh, it smells so good. So the next thing we're going to do is coat the flavors, add the potatoes to this, add some water, add some rice. We're actually almost done. It's pretty simple. Actually, it says here the cooking, the prep is 30 minutes and the cooking time is about an hour and a half and it serves four people. It's not too bad. Wowzer. Tell me that doesn't look like something really amazing and tasty. I'm gonna see if I've put just the right amount of salt and everything. Oh, that's good. Now I need to make the rice. That should be enough. So I was talking about uni and maybe a little bit about work. So uni, I was in Cape Town for pre-university and on my trick. My trick is actually like form, form six. <laughs> But in some countries, it's kind of treated as a foundational course. Some of the more famous foods of South Africa are borrowers. Um, there's pap, which is like ugali, but a lot softer. Mkhodu, which is matumbo. And I enjoyed them. It just introduced me to another set of flavors. And so that was Cape Town. Then I went to Malaysia. Oh, talk about flavor. Malaysia, there was everything from there was Thai food, there was Malay food, there was Indian food, there was Japanese food, there was Singaporean food, there was Chinese food. Um, and so I, I made a really cool group of friends when we were there. We, we were like, we were six or seven of us and we were from different countries and cultures. Botswana, Kenya, Singapore, Indonesia, New Delhi, Brunei. And it was, it was so much fun exploring and experiencing all the flavors and cultures of our countries. I just put the rice, I put the paneer aside. So at some point, everything's just gonna come together. So there was Malaysia and it was fantastic. I remember going to this place called Penang and Penang is like one of the food havens in Malaysia. And you know, you taste food that literally your mouth starts to have fireworks inside. So that was great. And then I really became a foodie when I started working. How did I forget Capital FM when I was 19? Before South Africa, how? because I used to spend a lot of time eating out. So that introduced me to the love of eating out. 
I just always feel like I could have saved so much money over the years if I just hadn't eaten out so much, but I love experiencing food and eating out. So there we go, that's that. Then went back to South Africa when I was headhunted for the position of news anchor and producer. Now I was living by myself in South Africa. And then I really fell in love with food from SA and fell in love with really making myself great dishes. So this is crazy, kind of sad and crazy, but my time in South Africa between 2009 and 2011, I made some of the best dishes I've ever made in my life. I experimented with dishes, with oven roast, a really good leg of lamb, learn how to do a really great oven, uh, chicken or oven roast, learn how to make great stew. And I was teaching myself, remember I had Food Network there and I used to Google a lot and I just had so much fun with food and I kind of missed that, Janet. <sighs> I feel like that was a lifetime ago. So that was the one time that I, I can think about how in love I was with the cooking experience and with bringing dishes to life. And then I spent two years there and came back and joined Citizen um, in 2011. And then I don't know whether I would come back to Kenya and I just got busy, but I cooked okay food. It was just nice. And so either I'd have somebody help, you know, make food eventually, especially as I, you know, continue to get busy and busy, I'd have somebody come in and help with a few uh, things in the home and then just eat out a lot, probably more than was necessary. And then I started a family. Let me come back to that. <laughs> it's a tad fair amount of food color, but it looks good. So I'm gonna cover this now in low heat and give it time to really cook. That's done. Interesting thing you may have noticed is there's no meat. So let me come to that. I became a mom, 2015. Did my diet change much? It was a lot of the typical things to help with breastfeeding, the uji, soups, hot chocolate, irio, plain white rice, spinach, a ton of fruits, but fruits that didn't have acid in them. So it was pretty strict, but very healthy. I think I remember feeling so good and light. This is when I gave birth to, to Huru. And I stuck with that for about four or five months. When I finished breastfeeding him, after like four to five to six months, I exploded. It was the whole junk food. I traveled different countries and counties and regions. And so I was just in a very exploratory phase of life. Um, and so whatever I went, wherever I went, I would ask, what's the best dish here? What do you recommend? Let's have that. I wasn't really paying attention to my health as such. That was one of the first few times in life that I just said, let it go, life is short, let's just enjoy. And then fast forward to when I conceived Mali. I had him in September of 2018. But then I was, remember I was readmitted in hospital. And I was readmitted five days after having him, had two more surgeries, had my gallbladder removed. And I remember him saying, diet doesn't really play much of a role from here on out. This is the doctor who operated me, who's done this for decades. But because my cousin had had a cholecystectomy, my dad had had one, everyone was just kind of advising me to try and rearrange my diet. And honestly, from that day, I've never been the same. So a lot of boiled foods, um, fresh juices, no chemicals, no wine, no soda, nothing for the longest time, for months. Terere Managu, that's when I started eating a lot of those. Um, very rarely red meat, lots of chicken, a little bit of fish. I started binging a year after my cholecystectomy. But every time I would, I would feel like crap. I'd feel horrible. And I, I felt, feel like I was starting to have a bit of an unhealthy relationship with food. So lots of carbs, lots of fatty foods, lots of sweets. I have a sweet tooth, so lots of cake. But I'd feel horrible. Sometimes I couldn't really sleep. And I think it's because my system was adjusting. I guess when you don't have your gallbladder, I think, isn't there more work on your liver? But I remember the doctor saying, not necessarily. He didn't say it's not going to happen. He just said, there's no, it's not necessarily that there's a link between not having your gallbladder and having to change your diet. But I feel like that's what it was happening. There we have the final dish. So I'm just going to have a little plate here. Let me just serve a little bit of the rice and a little with the same spoon, clearly, and just see. <sighs> I hope this is good, Janet. Smells good. Wow. Chef Ali, I think you'd be proud. I think you'd be proud of this coast girl. So, COVID hit. We were on lockdown in quarantine. Ever since May, 
I haven't been able to consume meat and carbs and dairy the same. Insane. So essentially, I became largely, and I say largely, not completely, a vegetarian from May. I'm the kind of person who had meat every single day. I was having lamb once in a while, or having seafood, or having beef. Just a meat lover. And then suddenly, my system just didn't want it anymore. And it was not forced, it was so organic. Until today, I am completely jazzed as to how that's happened. I haven't taken sugar, me, and let me tell you, if Janet can give up sugar, anybody can give up sugar. So I need to explain though, it's not like a hard and fast, I've dropped everything. It's just because it's not doing anything for my body, it doesn't make me feel good anymore. It actually makes me feel sick. I've removed it. So I've now traded dairy milk for almond milk. So I take a lot of almond milk. Um, breakfast, for example, I have oats. It's a nice full oats meal. I have the oats, then I mix it with watermelon to give it some flavor, then I put mango, banana, grapes, um, nuts, yogurt, and it keeps me full till like 10, 11 a.m., so I love it. And then I have it with coffee, which I make with almond milk. And then I, for lunch, I'll have brown rice, mushrooms, spinach, butternut, and some stew, no meat. Same thing for dinner, spaghetti, some stew. Um, for snacks, I have the snack bar, or I'll have dried mango, or raisins, or dates. And I just can't believe, look, I mean, there's no meat here. That's why I made this paneer dish. I mean, you can add your lamb or your chicken with this, but I opted not to because I'm just not eating it anymore. Hmm. I don't know if this means I'm on a path to being fully vegetarian. I don't want to force it, but I embrace it. If that's what my body is going to respond to, I'm going to lean into that and it's a natural, organic transition. So I don't know, please link below interesting vegetarian dishes. I'm dying to make some and eat some. I love flavor, love, love flavor. I haven't been able to find, well, there's options. I go online quite a bit, but if you think that there's interesting ways to have simple, effective, tasty veggie meals, link them below. But yes, I'm not saying I'm officially one, but largely, I'm eating largely veggies. So yeah, that's my cook with me video, my relationship with food. Um, let me know if you'd want to know anything else or another kind of video related to myself and food. But yeah, thank you YouTube and Chef Ali Mandri for this amazing opportunity to do this cook with me episode. I've had a fair bit of fun. Will I get back into cooking big time? I think I might. This was actually not so bad. I was very nervous because I haven't cooked something like this in a while. Like whatever I make is so simple. So thank you, cheers. And I think you would like what I'm eating. Mm. Little guy finally woke up, perfect timing, just when I was done. I wanted to mention that um, I have a five things on my mind video that I've recorded coming up. One to do with women taking up spaces, which I think is really great. So look out for that. I obviously want to keep trying to do these videos, but it, it comes with energy, ETC. Of course, the Inu Adada Voices content that I'm putting up. So getting into a season of really interesting in-depth conversations that I've really wanted, wanted to be having. So yeah, please make sure you subscribe so that you can follow those conversations. Follow me on social media. You'll find it in the description box. Official Janet Bogo on Instagram, Official J Bogo on Twitter, and Janet The Journey on Facebook. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon.